If you've played Fortnite, you know that feeling. You know, that sense of dread and fear and tension that takes over your mood while you quietly tiptoe around Tomato Town, hoping that one of the remaining eight players doesn't kill you before you get the chance to kill them. In the distance, gunshots echo as you crouch and cover. You begin to move around, peeking out a window to get any view you can, when suddenly, you hear footsteps and stop dead in your tracks. Your heart rate has increased as you desperately listen to try to get a location on your enemy. Finally, he comes into view and with adrenaline coursing through your veins, you engage in a chaotic and quick firefight to see who gets to move on. You win and you move on, only to repeat the process all over again. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is NopeNapNarp and today, why does playing Fortnite lead to so many players reporting sensations of fear, dread, and anxiety? Well, today I look to answer that question in this episode of Psychology of Gaming. The series where we take a look at how games either show off a psychological concept or how games can affect us psychologically. Here in episode 6, we take a look at the massive success that is Fortnite Battle Royale. An obvious copy of Player Unknown's Battlegrounds that has surpassed its influencer in many ways, including its free price tag and no major lag issues. Of course, everything I'm about to say also applies to PUBG and other battle royales of the future. But in this video, we're gonna focus on Fortnite. And without further ado, let's jump straight in to today's video. So, Battle Royale games sure were big in 2017. With the massive success that was Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, copycats were sure to come crawling around. Fortnite's Battle Royale mode will surely be the first of many of its kind. Hell, even Red Dead Redemption 2 is rumored to have a Battle Royale mode for crying out loud. These types of games have become so popular because one, they're pretty much a new genre, and two, because that feeling you get upon finishing in first place is super addicting. But while playing, a lot of players report experiencing emotions related to fear, such as tension, anxiety, nervousness, slight paranoia, and of course, fear itself. So why is this? I mean, it's not like Fortnite is designed to be a horror game in the same vein as, say, Resident Evil 7 or Outlast. Well, like many aspects of psychology, it doesn't come down to one simple thing. No, instead, it's more complex, as there are a few different elements that factor into why a person may experience fright while playing Fortnite. So let's take a look at this fear that Fortnite produces using the psychological perspective. So, it's of course important to say that not every player is going to experience sensations of fear while playing Fortnite, but I'd say that the players who will experience it are those who choose to play more defensively. Players who try to find the safest place on the map to land, away from as many people as possible, aka not tilted towers. They are happy to sit in the corner of a house until that cloud shrinks down upon them before making their paranoid run to the next circle. This is, of course, the kind of player I am. Call me a weenie if you must, but I genuinely believe it's the best strategy for winning, and I'd say players such as myself are more likely to experience the unease and fear. These sensations of dread, anxiety, and terror come down to a few different elements of the game that invoke these emotions in us. Those elements include permanent death, isolation, claustrophobic conditions, minimal noise, and of course, fear of the unknown. So let's take a look at these in a little more detail, and how they are baked right into the gameplay of Battle Royale games. Let's start by talking about permadeath, because it is the core game design decision that influences how players will experience Battle Royales the most. You get one life, and that's it. If you die, it's back to the lobby to wait for another match to start. Every player knows this when a match begins, and it heightens your focus on the game. Every decision, every moment, every action, every weapon and power-up you pick up, and every bunker you build is influenced by the fact that you know if your health bar reaches zero, 
all that progress is lost. The stakes are high, and when people feel pressure, it can easily lead to feelings of nervous anticipation that escalate quickly until they culminate with fear or shock as you desperately try to kill that player who is raining down bullets on you. All of the other factors we're going to talk about are magnified by the fact that this game is designed around this permanent death mechanic. So next up is isolation. So obviously when you're playing solo, isolation plays a big role in influencing your emotions. And it's not necessarily the fact that you're alone that invokes the fear. It's the fact that you know that there are people out there who want to kill you. And that the only player who wants to see you win is of course yourself. But it's more than that. We as humans are social creatures, in different capacities of course, but we all need some sort of interaction with other people to maintain a healthy mindset. I mean, think about it. When someone acts up in prison, what do they do to the person? They lock them up in solitary confinement. The ultimate punishment. Isolation from everything. We fear complete isolation, and even though Fortnite is obviously just an experience within a video game, when you get immersed into it, this primal fear can act up and influence your emotions at the current time. You are alone, and no one else is going to help you. Every noise you hear is the enemy surrounding you to hunt you down and end your existence. It's scary. This brings us to the next factor, which is the claustrophobic conditions that the game utilizes, and it goes hand in hand with the isolation that we just talked about. Not only are you alone to defend yourself, you're constantly being pushed into a smaller and smaller area alongside your dangerous competitors. And I should note that a player's sense of tension and fear grow as the map shrinks smaller and smaller. It's an inverse correlation. When the map starts out large and you can go anywhere for the first few minutes, this element of claustrophobia doesn't really apply, but it grows exponentially with each time the storm moves in on you. It culminates with a final confrontation with the remaining players in an incredibly small area. Your brain is trained to seek cover in Fortnite, as it is vital to survival and that feeds into the claustrophobic conditions as oftentimes the smaller circles will be in areas that lack good cover. It's why the best players will stock up on wood throughout a Fortnite match, so that by the end they can build up a fortress to protect themselves during the end game. Sure, they may be confining themselves into an even smaller area, but the trade-off is the protection that having a base grants. And again, the threat of permanent death influences and strengthens any feelings of claustrophobia that the player may be experiencing, as they are being forced into a forever shrinking area which increases the chance of a confrontation with another player. Another element is of course noise, and more specifically, that the game relies on a minimalistic approach to sound. While in a Fortnite Battle Royale match, the game doesn't play any music in the background. All you ever really hear is bullets in the distance, footsteps of nearby players, walls being built up, and of course, shiny treasure boxes waiting to be opened. Besides that, you don't hear much outside of birds chirping and ambient sound within buildings, and that near silence adds to the tension that the player may already be experiencing. Think about it, your favorite horror movies, there's a reason that the directors will often minimize as much noise as possible before a jump scare. It's designed to get you on the edge of your seat and build up tension within your emotions. Fortnite relies on the same principle. When you hear a sound that you aren't creating, it invokes a sense of dread in many players, as the tension building silence has been snapped by an unknown threat. This can induce mild panic in certain players. In my opinion, this game has really good sound design. For the reasons that I just mentioned, it's all centered on building up player tension, which goes well with the type of gameplay that the player is experiencing. You see, our brains are always experiencing some sort of noise, whether it's the chatter of nearby people, a TV that's on in the distance, or some music playing in the background. Even if you aren't actively paying attention to the sounds you're hearing, your brain is still picking up on them to determine if they are potential threats or not. In fact, our brains like to hear noise in most situations because it gives us a better understanding of our surroundings, which in turn can make us feel more at ease and able to relax. 
It's why so many YouTubers, including myself, put music in the background of videos. We do that because silence is a killer. Silence confuses the brain, especially in tense situations. And that's why the use of minimal noise is so powerful in a game like Fortnite. You know threats are out there, but you can't detect them audibly until they're very close to you. The normally silent area allows your brain to become hyper-focused on any unknown sounds. And speaking of the unknown, I want to talk about fear of the unknown, and this is obviously something that affects all of us. As much as we'd like to, we can't predict the future, and we also can't learn about something until we've gathered enough information to understand it. Because of these two things, humans have a general sense of fear towards the unknown. And it isn't always fear, sometimes it's paranoia, or unease, or ignorance. But generally, these feelings are fear-related when in high-stakes, tension-filled moments, such as playing Fortnite. It's why moments like hearing a bump in the night can be so intimidating, because you have no idea what made that noise. It could be your dog bumping into a table, or an intruder entering your house with not so good intentions. Back to Fortnite, outside of spotting an enemy in the distance or hearing their footsteps, you generally don't have much of an idea where other players may be hiding. Their locations are largely unknown. Which wouldn't be an issue if they weren't threats to your survival and potential victory. Unfortunately for you, that isn't the case. Because of this and permanent death, there is always a sense of unease in most players, as an enemy could be lurking around any corner, or any building that you're about to check for loot. I think this is a big reason why the original Battle Royale was named Player Unknowns Battlegrounds, because every player's location is virtually unknown until it's too late. That is of course speculation, but it wouldn't surprise me if it were true. And finally, that brings us to confrontations between players. All of the factors that I just listed build up tension and paranoia and fear, but ultimately these emotions have to break down in some sort of tense showdown with other players. It's almost unavoidable. You can't win a match of Fortnite without engaging in combat with at least one other player, as even if you survive till the end, you're gonna have to kill that remaining player outside of the moments where, you know, they accidentally kill themselves, which is super rare. You'll notice that as you play, these moments of combat are frantic, tense, and usually over quite quickly, kind of like a jump scare in a horror movie. It's a culmination of all those sensations that the game has been building up within your emotions. If you survive, you gotta get back out there and go through it all again, and if you die, well, you're probably gonna load up another match to experience it all over again. So, in conclusion, all of these factors that I've mentioned interact with each other perfectly in Battle Royale modes, and it's why so many players report feeling scared, or frightened, or tense, or paranoid while playing these kinds of games. Our brains, for the most part, are trained to react to the situations presented in Fortnite by feeling tense and uneasy. A lot of it takes place in the amygdala, a small part of your brain that regulates fear and aggression. And check out episode 3 of Psychology of Gaming for more on that. Anyway guys, the reason that games like PUBG and Fortnite are so addicting is because when you overcome those fears and finish first place, you get to experience a genuine sense of accomplishment. It makes you feel like you can overcome anything, and that perhaps your fears weren't so rational in the first place. To me, these games aren't perfect, but they do a great job at taking the player on an emotional roller coaster, and that is why the games are so popular amongst so many people. And that brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please check out some of my other stuff on the channel. It's all greatly appreciated. If you're interested in more information on this topic, check out the links below. And also, I want to know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you enjoy Battle Royale modes? And what keeps you playing them over and over again? Let me know as I respond to all comments. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Consider subscribing for more, and as always, have a nice day, and take care.